What's up guys, it's Moreni here and welcome to the third episode of the Zero to Hero Team Edition series. At the start of today's episode we leveled up the Hunter to level 40. For this I needed 182 meat per character which makes a total of 7, 728 meat which I primarily farmed in the sewers area but as I mentioned in the last video you can also go to the Astro Forest area or the Astro Quarry area. Now we can drop level 40 meat and we are ready to go to the Kick Roach dungeon. To get to the dungeon you need a Rikiki wand. I also recommend to get one for every character so you don't have to trade it between them. In the third room you have the chance to get this nice uh, permished emote. For this you have to equip the Rikiki wand and click to the first available cell in the tent made of cards. In the next room you can press the Y button on your keyboard to highlight the clickable item items and then you have to click on the gigantic strawberry. Um, you get teleported to the fourth room and you basically get the emote. When you face the kick roach, you have the achievements last and tight. Last means you have to kill the kick roach last. Most of the time the last achievement also requires to kill the boss monster last, as it is in this dungeon. But sometimes it also can be an other monster, like in the Colossus dungeon. The second one is tight, which is pretty easy to do with these sets. The only thing you should consider is if you try to kill a monster and you are not 100% sure you can kill it, you should be able to finish next to your ally. I also had one or two situations like that and I played, played it safe so I don't fail the achievement. If you are new to the game, I would recommend to try the defensive website. There you can see all the details like health points, resistances, spells and their range about every monster in the game. So try it out and leave a comment in the comment section down below what you think about it and if it's uh, helpful for you. At the end of the Kick Roach dungeon you find a croquette on the left side. Here you can start the Brotherhood of the Forgotten questline. This questline is also part of the main questlines and for example required for the Lava Smith Doofus. Again equip the Rick key wand and start a conversation with the Croquette. After that talk to the Kick Roach and ask about the Magic Croquette. Select the option Treat to Rinsen Karup's house clean away. Click through the dialogues and finally talk to the Croquette again and withdraw it with the power of your Rikiki one. Leave the Kick Roach dungeon and go down the stairs to talk to Kerub Kreptin. Select the option show him the croquette. He will send you to the grocery store which is located at 1-16. Inside, click on the barrel on the right side while you have the Rikiki wand equipped. Talking to Ashante will start a solo fight against three monsters. My characters are around level 46 when I fought against them. The enemies were all around level 40, but they will also scale depending on your character's level. So if you fight them with level 60, um, they will be level 60 or higher. No other players can join the fight, so make sure you have your fight set equipped. I struggled a lot with my Echo Flip because he got locked straight away but I managed to get it done. With the other characters it wasn't a big deal. Especially with the Masquerader because he's very strong. I showed you in the last video which set I'm using and now you can see him in action. Casting Furia buffs 20 damage for two turns um, which I did in the first turn. And then you can, for example, use Show Off, which hits in four elements, or the Royal Goblin Sword, which also hits in four elements. And the 20 damage are added to um, every element of these four damages. So we have per, per attack, we have 80 additional damage, which 
results in the combination of these two attacks in 160 plus damage from the Furia buff. We have also the Pythophatic Mask, which adds another 10% melee damage. And in this setup, you can hit around 500 to 600 damage, maybe even more when you crit. In the future, I want to find a way to upgrade his set and still use the Royal Gobble Sword because I think it would be a very, very strong build. If you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comment section down below. To finish the quest, go back to Reptine at 3 minus 17 and you will get a ton of XP and some karmas in return for finishing the quest. Instead of continuing fighting dungeons and exploring the world of 12, I decided to level up my crafting professions and use the crafted items for crushing to gain some karmas. And in the end, it turned out pretty well. Um, you will see what I did exactly in this video from now. And I gained a lot of karmas. I went from 156,000 karmas on my main character to over 800,000 comps. I found this cloak here, Cape Rise, which gives two range and I was not expecting much because it's a low level item which costs around 2kk and it's obviously crafted to crush for range runes but I crafted five of them for testing and I also switched to Bragma because there I can use the Zappies to speed up the process. When I crushed them, I got 4 ranged runes out of 5 caves, so basically I invested 10kk of resources which I had on my bank account and got 24kk worth of runes out of it. This equals a profit ratio of 2.8kk per cape, so I went on and crafted more of them. In the end, I crafted 106 capes and got 75 range runes out of it. If you calculate with 2kk investment per cape and 6kk return per rune, I invested 212kk worth of resources and got 450kk worth of runes. But I also had a ton of substrates in my bank account from leveling my gathering professions, so as I said before, it turns out and on the long run, so one cape costed me around 1kk, 450kk minus 406kk equals 334kk profit, which is pretty, pretty insane. The multiplayer wasn't too low, but the resources were too expensive in the market and it wasn't worth it anymore, so I went over to other items. I basically have always the same system. I craft one, two, or sometimes five to 10 items. Then I go to the crusher and test them and see how much profit I can get. For example, these daggers worked pretty good for crit runes, but I only added them because I also had a lot of aluminite in my bank. The hammer was really nice, around 600 karmas investment and 1.5kk return, so 900 karmas profit with a low multiplier. Uh, when the multiplier is low, it will take a lot of time, a lot of items to be crushed to drop it. The table knives were insane, 5.6kk worth of crit runes out of 1.5kk investment. Nuclear bow was okay. 1.9 return from 100 karmas investment. The last bow was also okay, but it decided not to go with it. I also tested this hit set bow, which had a very low multiplier, but 4.2kk out of 2kk investment was very nice. Sadly, I forgot on the first crush to make a focus crush and lost some karmas, but I'm still pretty heavy, happy. To level up the Juvela, I switched to this Lihilam metal, which costs around 2.2kk to craft and gains 4.4kk in return. 
the bat amulet was a complete disaster and the summon fisher amulet as well but i crafted them only for living by juvela as you can see on the screen a lot of stuff were sold and we end up with 800,802 commas on the bank we have resources worth like nearly 1.7 million commas and uh, at the end of this video we look at my professions we managed to get minor tailored lumberjack carver and juveler over level 60 which is great smith is nearly level 60 and the other professions except the alchemist and the hunter are in the level 50 area i'm pretty happy with uh, the progress um i hope you like it if you like it please like the video Leave a comment below if you have any questions, subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching, see you the next time.